Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video of JavaScript. I hope you are enjoying the series. Now let's go ahead and move forward. Now with this, I would also like to pay a small attention onto the fact that you might be coming up from other languages like C, C++ or maybe even C and you might be asking me that, hey, how can I take input from the user? How to do that from command line? It is not really necessary that the things that you do exactly in C++ need to be done exactly in JavaScript and exactly in Python. There can be a different structure of understanding the language, having different kinds of tutorial. So let's just not make every tutorial same where we define variables, data types, constant, and if and else and all of that. So let's not do the boating stuff. Instead, let's make it a bit more creative. Let's make it a bit more fun to understand this thing. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this one. In this one, we are going to assume that you are building a sign up form for my application, which is learn code online, and you want to take certain information from the user and dump down that information on the command line. We are going to assume that user is just passing on the information, but we won't be technically taking it the input here, just everything hard coded. Let's go ahead and try to understand what we can learn more on this. So first and foremost, I assume that you want to mark every user as unique as well. So you will be providing some unique ID to that user. I think that's the valid situation here. So for that, remember, we talked a bit more about the variable keywords here. So we discussed about var for variable. We didn't talk about the cons that much. So eventually we're going to talk about all of them. Let's go up here. So let's just say I define a simple const this time instead of var. And I say uid, which is unique ID, a short for that. And I define a unique ID as, let's just say, abc123. Just fair enough pretty unique. And then later on, in some point, if you want to just change this UID, that is going to be now not ABC123, but it's going to be ABCD and 234. Now, this is not going to be allowed. Now, this is not giving you any errors, unlike C and C++. But when you're going to try to run this application, which is inside the 02 basics and 02 variable2.js, this is going to give you an error that, hey, you mark this space in the memory as const, means it's a constant, it's not variable, that means it cannot vary, and you try to reassign that. So this actually solves the problem where we accidentally uh, try to just change the thing which should not be changed. Like, if you're registering any user, he should be unique in our application. And such thing actually helps us to avoid such scenario. So which one is my favorite, variable or constant? As a beginner, you might be saying, hey, I want to keep everything as variable so that I have ability to change. But eventually, after five or six years of experience, you're going to say, no, I would like to keep as much as possible as constant in my application rather than having variables. This helps in resolving so many bugs. But again, that discussion for later on about experience things. But let's just go ahead and try to use that now. Okay. So we have a hard-coded value of UID as of now, but we're going to have a few variables as well. So let's just say how you want to design the sign-up form for this page. So obviously, we are going to have simply first name of the user, or let's just say full name, not the first name. Let's take the entire name in just one variable. So I'm going to add up here. There we go, if I can write my name. So there we go. What else would you like to take? Obviously, an email. So let's go ahead and say this is going to be the email. Let me grab my email. There we go. What else do we want? We want to say a password as well. So we're going to say password. Let's just say my password is 123456, which never is the password. But again, let's just say for some reason I got this one. Obviously, we want to take confirm password. So I'm going to simply say confirm password. There we go. And this time, we're going to again enter 123456. Right now, we don't have enough skills to compare the password, check it, provide user different messages, we don't have that much right now. But this much it, we got this one. Now also apart from that, we're going to say course count as well. So let's just say uh, course count. There we go. As the user sign ups, that course count should be zero. Makes sense. And uh, let's just say this user, since he's signing up from email and password, he's not logged in through Google. So we're going to say is logged in from Google. And that is going to be marked as false. And you might be saying, why such long name for the variable? 
it's actually a good practice that you name your variable a bit longer instead of x, y, a, b, which are good for teaching purposes, no hard feeling for that. In fact, in some of the videos, you're gonna notice me using those x, y, and a, b, that's okay. But when I'm building the application, I never like to keep my variable name as x, y, a, b, that's a bad idea. So having these kinds of forms, and you're gonna notice while building the professional, a production grade application, exactly these variable names are used, and that's what we got. So we have all the mix up here for strings, some numbers, some Boolean values. So these are all here. Now the important thing is a simple sidebar. I will be creating a lot of sidebar. Now, if you want to take input from the user, uh, there are a couple of options in front of us that we can have. For example, if you might have heard in the JavaScript, which is pretty famous, there is classic alert here, which is pretty annoying, the pop-up box that comes up from the web page, and we can do that. If you want to take input from the user, you can use something similar to alert, which is prompt. And here you can take input from the user. Something like enter, come on, enter your name. And once that is being done, you can store that into some variable. For example, you can store that into full name and that's it. You can do that, but in that case, we have to attach this particular file with a web page. I really don't want to do that. That's too much of annoying work every single time. So we're gonna avoid this one, but just to give you an idea, yes, that's one of the way you can take input from the user, but that's pretty bad way. I don't want to take that way. I'll show you more, a uh, better way of doing the things. Okay, coming on to the point. Now we want to display the information. So obviously one of the way is we can have a console log and uh, we can have simple first name. So make sure you are putting up exact variable name, not first name, my bad, full name. So just use exact variable name and we can display the information. Let's try to run this one again and we get my name. I can go ahead and duplicate that and I can use another one, so email, there we go. Save that and run that. This surely is one of the many way how we display the information, but let's just say we want to modify it a little bit. And again, by the same way, you can use the UID as well. So let's have a, a small duplicate of that and we're gonna say, give me the UID. There we go. Now let's go ahead and run this. And we can see that the constant variable, everything can be displayed like this. But this is not a fantastic way. So we're gonna uh, brush it up a little bit to have some fun. So I'm gonna add a simple string here and I'm gonna say uh, simply like full name is a colon and like that. Now once you do this and you want to have a mix of your own custom string and some variable, there are a couple of ways you can actually have a plus of it. This is gonna work absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and run this. It says full name is and my name. You can also use a bunch of other things as well. You can use a comma too and this also works fine. Which one should you use? Feel free to use anything. Usually you're gonna see people using plus a bit more because it gives you more flexibility. So this is one of the way of having the things, but am I a big fan of this one? No, not really, because I think there are better options of having this. Let me show you that, which I use a lot. So we're gonna again do a console log. Come on, why is it not doing it? Sometime it doesn't. So let's just say we're gonna have a console.log. And what I like to use is these backticks. Again, these are just below your escape key, so these are the ones. What it allows us, it gives me the ability to write things more in the more freedom way. So let's just say we're gonna hit a couple of enters and I'm gonna now write a simple text, something like this. With unique ID, and then I'm gonna insert the ID here in a second. I'm gonna say user is, and I'm gonna add a name here after that. And then I can say, and his email is, usually I don't want to display the password, but let's just say, and uses the password just like that. Now in this way, I can define it however I want. And whenever I want to insert any variable, I use a simple dollar sign. And after that, these two curly braces. And this means I can use a variable here. For example, let's just say I'm gonna use a unique ID. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it up here. So it's gonna say with unique ID. So wherever, it's not really mean to say that it should be at the end, it can be any place. You can have this one here. So what is the username? Again, use a dollar sign and there we go. Again, this doesn't really work if you are having these quotes. Again, the quotes are like this and your backticks are like this. So make sure you get a difference between them. Quotes are not backticks. And here I'm gonna add a full name here. So let's just say full name and his email. Let's add another variable. 
let's go there and say email there we go and password there we go and we're gonna say password save this and the advantage of using these syntaxes i can do much much easier it's much more readable too if i run this now notice here it says with unique id uh, abc123 user is stuff and like that don't worry our above input is still there the log that we did here that is there but this is much more precise much more readable and i can have more flexibility of injecting the variable like this in the world of javascript they call it as interpolation again lots of fancy words you don't need to worry too much about them, but this is a better way of displaying this stuff here. Okay, a quick side note again. Right now, I cannot compare the password and confirm password, but later on, we're going to have a full-fledged application, which even checks whether your password is pretty rock-solid or not, and you're not allowed to submit something like 123456. We are going to build that beautiful application, but have patience, have patience, please. Okay, so this is all in great. Now, here comes your assignment. Now, my sign-up form is pretty, pretty small. I want you to extend it a little bit. I want the user to submit their uh, first name separately, then the last name, then email, password, their country, their state, and finally, uh, these uh, other fields like course count and is logged in from Google and is logged in from Facebook. I want you to just write all of these variables and dump the information just exactly like this with back quotes and again, bit of a uh, nice and easy way to have these information and display wise as well. So go ahead and please do this assignment and tag me on Instagram or somewhere. If you're following this up series, we're going to have a lot of such fun assignment eventually with the complexity increasing up day by day. But that's all what we got. So I hope you have enjoyed this one. Let's go ahead and catch up in next one.